right, so I've been wanting to do a series on Reese views for orbits. And I think orbits are kind of getting phased out here. Uh, you know, CT's taken over a lot of the head work, but uh, we still need to know, you know, on occasion and for the ART registry exam. So let's kind of get started here. Positioning criteria for the Reese view. Uh, you need the mid-sagittal plane 53 degrees to the image receptor. That's kind of a odd number, but usually that's how the optic foramen is housed in, you know, in relationship to the uh, orbital rims. And I'll, I'll have a little trick that I can show you later to, to help you with that angle. The acanthiomeatal line should be perpendicular to the IR. It's this line here I highlighted. Central ray perpendicular to the downside orbit. So if the tube was on the opposite side of this uh, head here in the picture, central ray would exit right through the middle here coming at us. Uh, we always want to try to get the uh, orbit closest to the image receptor if possible. And then bilateral projections are typically taken for comparison. Sometimes uh, doctors want you to include only the orbit of interest in each view and sometimes they want both. I, I think it's kind of great to have both because uh, there is a blowout fracture or something on the side up or this side here, not the side of interest. Sometimes you can see evidence of that even in the view for this orbit. Uh, so here's our positioning criteria again. Our mid-sagittal plane is here. Uh, this is our bird's eye view. A central ray should be coming posteriorly, exiting the orbit side down. Dotted line is supposed to represent the image receptor or the line parallel to it. It's obviously going to be out here. And then here's our 53 degree angle with mid-sagittal plane, 53 degrees from the image receptor. And that leaves a 37 degree angle, if you're going to do the, the math there, between the mid-sagittal plane and the central ray. So here's our Here's one of our tips here, the three-point landing. If you get the chin, nose, and cheek, chin right here, nose, and cheek, all resting against the uh, bucky or the table, um, you're, you're going to have a good, pretty much a good setup for that 53-degree angle. Uh, the only difference is, you know, sometimes people have a little bit different shaped head or, or a longer nose. There's another tip that I'll talk about in a second, but if you're laying them supine, think of laying a sheet of paper across the chin, nose, and cheek here and kind of stoop down to view that plane just to see if it's parallel to your image receptor. Here's another trick for you. Um, if you can do it upright or prone um, on the table, you need to make sure that AML is, is perpendicular and then just rotate the head until you can see a good eyelash shadow forming right here. Still make sure that the chin, nose, and cheek are touching, and then kind of do the, the rotation. Just like that, I mean, it's it's going to be pretty pretty easy to get once you get there. Obviously, you want to look at the uh, the central ray. This is about where it would enter. You know, I tried to draw a little collimated field here. The orbit side down is going to be right about here. Um, you could probably even collimate even tighter than I have it there. So maybe even like this would be even more ideal. For image critique, we have the optic foramen in the lower outer quadrant. That's it right here. You know, and you should be visualizing its position within the orbit here for proper critique. Some of the images here came from uh, BioDigital Human Google Chrome app. Got that link here on the next slide. So we'll, we'll definitely uh, look at that in just a second here once the uh, slide shows over. But definitely have tight collimation. If, if uh, you have a cone or cylinder, it would be ideal, or just real tight, you know, 5x5 five five or 6x6 six six collimation. But you want to use that relationship between the optic foramen and the orbital rims to determine over or under rotation or proper uh, neck flexion or extension. Here's the website for the uh, BioDigital Human. So what I'm going to do is kind of pan up to the head here and uh, zoom in just a bit. And I've got it set to skeletal system, but you can, you've got all sorts of systems you can uh, take a look at here. Let's zoom in just a little bit more. Oh, there we go. That's much better. All right, so I'm just going to kind of locate the optic foramen here, and it is right here. If I try to get this AML perpendicular to, to my vantage point from here, you know, chin, nose, and cheek would probably have this out here. He went lower outer quadrant. So this would be a, a decent uh, position right here. If the chin's elevated too much, you can see that optic foramen being posterior to the 
inferior orbital rim, it's going to be dropped down below it. If the chin's tucked in too much, we're watching this optic foramen here, the more the chin's tucked, the higher it's going to go. All right, so let's get back to a good position here, right about there. If you don't rotate the head enough, if you're under-rotated, optic foramen's going to sneak in behind the uh, ethmoid bone there. It's going to be too medial, and eventually it's going to be hidden. You won't be able to see it. If you're too rotated, it's going to be out towards the lateral margin of the orbit. I like this software. It's got different features for uh, for all anatomy, and I think it's even got a an X-ray feature here that's really nice. You know, obviously not the best feature for for this tutorial, but it is kind of nice for um, you know some other ones if you're trying to get relationships between bones and need to see through some anatomy. Well, I hope you have found this useful, and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.